let's take an introductory look at the win data source. So let's go into our Visual Studio toolbox and locate the ultra data source as it's called within the actual toolbox. Here it is, double click it and we add it to the component area. Uh, let's give it a name, let's say if we want to call it ultra data source customers. And again, this is an introdu introductory look, so I'll show you various things that you can do with this, and there'll be other videos that show you how to use this in other types of use cases. So one of the major things about the Win data source is that it allows you to create a schema or a data model with a designer. So if we click on the smart tag and go to the Ultra Data Source Designer, we notice we have the ability to create bands and then columns for each band. You could translate this into other words, so you could create entities or entity types with this section here, and then the properties of each, each entity here. So for example, I could set this one up to be the customer entity. And then the customer should have, let's say, customer ID. Uh, how about first name, address, so that's basically what you can do with this. You create entities and their properties, and you set the types here. So let's say customer ID, you want to set it up as, say you want to set up as an int or a double or any of these guys. Let's do int64. Um, you can set up as read only, or there's a tag property on there as well if you wanted to do that programmatically. So do that. Then you could also add a child entity. So let's do orders or the order entity. So the order should have a customer ID. Then we could have... You don't really need a customer ID. You could always work your way up, but it's always I personally think it's good to have that just in case you want to access only that one child band. So let's say if we do order ID, and then let's say order date, and then again, you could pretty much set this up and set up the different data types here. So I wanted to set this one up as date time. Uh, this one could be also in 64 as we did before. This one could be also in 64. So they're all set up. You could set default values if you like. Another thing that you can do that's really awesome is you can enter some data. So for example, if I enter a customer ID, let's see, Tom, and 123 Hello Street. And now that I've entered one record, I could also enter the child records for this. And then we, we get a little drop down editor here. So let's enter this date here, and then we apply, then we basically get out of edit mode. So you could also use this to enter some sample data as well. So by doing this, you could then grab any data bound control. Let's say if I grab ultra grid and dump it on the form, and then we set the data source of the grid to the ultra data source. And by doing that, and then we run the application, we have our data. But now, when Ultra Data Source was built back then, the purpose of Ultra Data Source was to provide developers with the means to work with the grid in an unbound fashion. That was one use case. Another use case was so that with, combi with combination of Ultra Data Source and WinGrid, you can achieve a load on demand functionality. So that's basically why this was developed. So because WinGrid is strictly a data bound control and many developers back then felt that they didn't want to move to just strictly data bound control by just relying on data binding. They wanted control. They wanted to fetch business objects on their own from like a database. Then they wanted to flip through them with for each loop and then populate the grid themselves. They didn't want to rely on data binding. That's what Ultra Data Source is great for. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.